Hello, and welcome to our show, For the Love of Animals. We're so glad you joined us today. Our show is the local version of Animal Planet here on Comcast Channel 2. We have a great show for you today on the care of puppies and kittens. I'm Darlene Pigford. And I'm Greg Power, and I didn't realize we'd gotten in with Animal Planet Oh, now. yes, we're the local version, Greg. <laughs> and we've got our little friend Wicked here uh, to help us uh, do the show today. And I want to tell you about a couple of upcoming shows. Uh, we have one on bluebirds uh, that I think you'll find very interesting, yes. and also one with pets and children, and one dealing with volunteers. So we have several interesting shows coming up for you. What do we got on the show, though, for today, Darlene? Well, we ha we're going to be talking about the proper care of puppies and kittens. Okay. Uh, you know, somewhere during your lifetime, you've had either your own puppies or kittens or strays, and we want to make sure that these newborn animals get the proper care. Mm -hmm. Greg, All right. please introduce our guest today. I'll be most happy to. We have with us today Dr. Rennie Church, um, one of our local veterinarians, and she's brought a friend with her today. And we're so pleased that you're here. Would you introduce your friend there, please, <laughs> to us, Rennie? This is Birdie. Oh. She is a six-year-old smooth coat border collie. Uh -huh. And uh, she's a best friend to my two children and a pretty good buddy to me, too. Oh, that sounds great. Well, what other fur family do you have at home, then? I have two cats, Wampus and Hermione. And okay. I have uh, Birdie and a 10 or 10 to 12 year old. We don't really know. We just kind of inherited her <laughs> late in life pointer. And her name is Lulu. Oh, OK. So. Well, it sounds like that's enough to keep you busy yes. with <laughs> the kids and uh, being doctor also and that yes. sort of thing. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, great! Well, you you are a welcome guest too. Yes, you got to shake, huh? You, oh, <laughs> that's a good boy. <laughs> uh. Well, let's get started, Rennie. Let's suppose <clears throat> it's my own mother cat or dog. What do I feed and how do I care for newborn uh, puppies and kittens? That's a big question. If, uh, if the newborn puppy and kitten is on the mother, if you have right. a mother as well, they will nurse for approximately four weeks and okay. then the mother will start to wean them herself at about four weeks. Um, at that point in time, you can put out hard food. We encourage hard food because they're going to have their little needle teeth at that time and they can crunch hard food. But if, if you feel like they don't have the teeth that they need or, or they're struggling, you can add goat's milk to the, to the food or water and wet it down a little bit. And they'll still nurse off of mom for about another week and then they'll work on that, that hard food. You want to use a high quality puppy or kitten food. Uh -huh. And um, just let mom encourage them and, and you kind of, as, as they... Um, mature over the next week when they reach about five weeks they should be completely off mom by five or six weeks mm -hmm. so why is goat milk uh, good goat's milk uh, will not produce diarrhea it won't oh. hurt their stomachs you don't want to use cow's milk because that can cause some diarrhea problems in kittens and puppies mm -hmm. everyone okay. always wants to give kittens lots and lots of, lots of milk. milk you know uh -huh. out of the fridge and that can cause some uh, some pretty pretty good diarrhea so we, we discourage that and, and basically you should avoid canned food then I, I would, yeah. You want to stick with dry food. It's better for the teeth. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, yeah. And, and so you would mix the dry kitten food with goat's milk or either water to soften right. Just it for down. about a week, and then you know less As a and less. Uh huh. And mm -hmm. then they can get completely on the dry food. By the time they're six weeks old, they should be eating dry food. Okay. Okay. And what kind of environment, you know, should I keep these newborns in with the mama cat or the mama dog? Brand new puppies and kittens in the first two weeks of life, they need a lot of heat, warmth, and food. That's, that's all they care okay. about is being warm and being plenty fed. So, um, you know, if you, if you have them outside, you need to have them away from the wind in a protected area and have a heat lamp to keep them at approximately 85 degrees for the first couple of weeks. And then after that, they can self-regulate their temperature better and you can just keep them in a normal environment. So, okay. but the first couple of weeks are very important. So. Okay, much like you have to do with chicks. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pardon the analogy there. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a chick expert, but yes. <laughs> okay. Now, could you use just your regular heating pad that you might have? Well, you want to be very, very careful with heating okay. pads because you can cause thermal burns. It's a burn oh. that you would not see that would come from the inside out weeks later. So okay. if you're going to use a heating pad, you want keep it on low and keep lots of towels on top of it. So, And remember, puppies and kittens like to root, so you want to make sure it's oh, good yes. and covered so they're not laying directly on the heating pad. Oh, Hot yeah. water bottles are excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a hot water bottle is probably preferable. Much more, okay. yeah. Okay, because you're right because, you know, most of them just, uh, the heating pads just have the snaps. Yes. And they could burr underneath yes. those. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Now, what if it's a stray? Uh, for example, a stray cat or uh, a stray kitten or a stray puppy. How do I feed it? You know, it doesn't have mama. What do I do? Well, it depends on the age. If you okay. find one that is still needs milk, like is still small enough it would be right. on, on the mother, then you want to get a supplement and they have those at, um, you know, you can get them at any of the local pet food, local store. Pet food stores. Oh, okay. um, you will always follow directions on that particular brand because okay. it, it's, it's um, appropriate for what you're feeding, the directions are. Okay. But if you, say you find a litter, you know, you have a litter of these right. newborn babies, um, you could go to your vet and, and have them show you how to tube feed. It's very simple. The, the puppy or the kitten just kind of swallows this tube down the throat. Okay. You can fill it up with, with the supplement and uh -huh. then you're done. And that way you're not actually trying to bottle feed, you know, six, eight kittens or puppies, which, mm -hmm. you, you know, it would just be constant because they yes. need to eat every two to three hours. What, would you so, have to tube feed every two to three hours? Well, no. When you tube feed, you can actually fill them up with a little bit more. Okay. You can do more than what they can suckle and you can stretch it out to four to six hours. So uh, the directions on, on these supplemental boxes or bottles will tell you um, how much in a 24-hour period and tell you how you could divide it up. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And it, it also keeps them from uh, uh, puncturing that nipple with yes. your teeth. Yes, yes, Which can be a mess. <laughs> One of the, the biggest problems I see is, is someone will come in with a kitten or a puppy and they'll say, you know, he just seems to choke when I, when I put the bottle in his mouth. And that's because a lot of times they'll cut the hole too big. We get a little impatient. And so, you know, just dumping it in there uh -huh. and it needs just the tiniest needle prick oh. hole and they just need to suckle, but it takes them a while. So we tend to get a little bit impatient, I think. Okay. And, and the tube does not hurt them at all? No, no. Um, your vet can show you at the length. You, okay. you would, they would show you exactly the length you need so that you know when you're there, you know, okay. you have a target point on your tube. And you just slowly just let them swallow it. Go towards the left side and just let them swallow. And uh, they'll, you'll know when they're taking it down. So. Okay, and that way you would train me to do this at home? Yes, you need to go to your veterinarian gotcha. and be trained on how to do it. Okay. okay, well that hasn't been in my experience yet, so <laughs> that, that's a new one on me, but anything you can do to, to, to help these newborns. And of course, if you had a stray like that, you would keep it in a protected area. Yes. And if it were outside, there are all kinds of dangers mm -hmm. for a newborn kitten or a newborn puppy, so well. Whew, that's that's a lot of good information. Yes, it is. Uh, it's probably now for us to take a break. And, and we need to see a happy tale about, about, this is a first, about a horse named Lady. Named Lady. <laughs> we think you'll enjoy it. My name is Lady, and I am a black and white Tennessee walking horse. I am now 11 years old, but when I was three, my owner decided to sell me, and that meant that I would be separated from my colt. I was very depressed and didn't know what was going to happen to me. But one day, Jen Smith came to my owner and said that she wanted to buy me. I was skeptical at first, but soon learned that we had a special bond. We knew that we could trust each other, too. Our eight years together have been wonderful. When Jen comes to see me at the stable, all she has to do is whistle, and I come running, just to see what she has for me. I especially love when she gives me carrots. I look forward to trail rides with Jen and other folks. Thank you, Jen, for giving me my wonderful forever home. Welcome back to our show. Uh, we're so glad that you are with us and that hope you enjoyed the uh, tale about Lady. That's uh, our first horse story. <laughs> yes, and we hope to do a show later dealing more with horses. But uh, back to our discussion where our guest today is Dr. Rennie Church and her uh, friend Bud, Birdie. Birdie. And uh, <laughs> what can we do about the medication situation relative to kittens and puppies? What should we look for? When should we uh, consult the vet and that sort of thing? Uh, a large question <laughs> with yeah. lots of answers. How do we handle <laughs> any medical problems that might arise? Typically the first visit will be at six weeks for okay. a new puppy yeah. and kitten. That's typically when we give the first set of shots. Um, you want to bring a fecal sample with you so that we can run a fecal and make sure there's no parasite problems. Um, hopefully they will have been dewormed two, three, four times before that six-week visit. Generally we deworm it two weeks, 
four weeks, and then we, we take a look again at, at six weeks and make sure that there's no parasites. When it, how do you deworm up? Do you put it in their food? Do you give them a pill? What um, do you recommend on dewormer? When they're that small, it's a liquid dewormer. Okay. And what we need is the weights because they're dewormed according to weight. So you can just okay. you know, put them on your scale at home and let us know. And uh, it's a liquid, and you just very slowly at the tip of the tongue give give the dewormer and let them just kind of lap it down. So, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So. And then when they come in at six weeks, if there are any parasites, we will probably deworm three days in a row and then repeat in about 10 days after that. So, But at that first checkup at six weeks, they'll get their first shots. And um, like I said, the deworming and a really good physical, make sure that there's no mm -hmm. problems, no heart problems, no eye problems, anything that, that uh, may pop up. And what, tell us more about the vaccinations. Uh, I have heard that it's important that an animal receive it in the first year of their life if the vaccinations are going to take. Is that correct? Well, you want to booster them. And what the booster okay. does, with each booster, it reminds the body that if you ever see this again, you know, don't let it get out of control. Okay. Take care of it. So um, the first shots are at six weeks, like I said, and then about every three weeks after that. And at 15 to 16 weeks, they'll get their last booster and their rabies vaccine. And if it's a puppy, they'll start on heartworm prevention at that time as well. So Okay. Uh, you know, you have the common problems of fleas and ticks mm -hmm. and mites mm -hmm. and things like that. How, how do we control those or, or keep that problem down with newborns who are so sensitive to chemicals and, you know, all right. kinds of... Most of the flea prevention products uh -huh. are not safe until eight or ten weeks of age. Okay. So, you know, until then, if you say you find a, a small kitten or, or puppy and they're covered in fleas, right. you can wash them in Dawn dishwashing liquid. It's, oh. it, it will kill the fleas that are on them. It won't prevent new fleas, but it'll okay. kill the fleas that are on them. Just want to be sure that you dry the puppies and kittens really well. We don't want them to get chilled. You know, mm -hmm. We talked about how important warmth is. Yes. So if you're going to give them a bath, use warm water and then use um, a blow dryer and dry them off. Right. So, now, how about their eyes with that Dawn dishwashing detergent? Uh, we just want to stay away from so, the yeah, face. Be real careful yeah, just of be their real eyes. careful around the face. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I was going to say. Oh, talk, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about controlling fleas. Um, the, there, like I said, there's lots of products out there, and um, typically they're they're safe at, at around eight or ten weeks. So you can check with your vet on that. Mm -hmm. Ear mites is another big problem. Seems to be a cat problem more than dogs. dogs. Okay. But they pick it up just in the environment. So if you see an exudate in the ears, or if the ears are itchy and they're really picking at the ears, then um, just take them by the vet, let them do an ear swab, and see if there's mites, and it's very easily treatable. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And uh, just want to be real careful around them not to use anything that's toxic right. because they are so s sensitive. Right. And never ever use a flea product that's specifically for dogs on a cat. It needs to say for use in cats because okay. some of the um, over the counter flea and tick medications are heavy on pyrethrins and those are really hard on cats. They're toxic okay. to cats. Okay. So. so you don't want to use any pyrethrin ingredient on right. in a flea. Uh, on a cat. Yeah. Uh, on a cat. Okay. Right. You want to use age appropriate and um, uh, appropriate for dogs okay. or cats. Is the reverse true, though? What's Suppose that? that you have a cat medic, uh, flea medication, can you use that on a dog? Um, you or know, you don't want to, to do anything off label. Okay. okay. But typically, you know, things that are safe for cats are pretty safe for dogs, but not vice versa. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 And what kind of products would you do for cleaning their ears? They just, maybe they don't have mites, but you just want to keep their ears clean. Um, you could use a little bit of alcohol down in the ear, as long as okay. the ears are not red or you don't have any open sores in the ears. And then just take a tissue with your finger, you know, around the, your finger in the tissue and just wipe it out just gently. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay. Like a Kleenex or a paper yes. towel and just... Uh -huh. I don't think clean. the towel oh, might be a little inside. too stiff. Well, yeah. Uh, Kleenex. <laughs> well, that's true. But with our cats, uh, Kleenex works very well. Yes. Or yes. tissue, Kleenex I should say. Good. good choice. <laughs> okay. Um, I once dealt with a little kitten, and I thought it was fine. And then a day or two, you know, it, it was eating. And then all of a sudden, it really got distressed. In fact, mm -hmm. it passed away. What things should we look for? to safeguard the health of a newborn cat or kitten? Um, especially in kittens, any nasal discharge, if, if their nose is crusty, or if there's ocular discharge, if there's any discharge in the Around eyes, it. then that um, is likely a sign or symptom of an upper respiratory problem. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And cats, you know, if they can't breathe through the nose, if a cat's ever breathing through the mouth, you've got a problem. So um, if you see discharge from the nose or from the eyes, uh, rapid breathing, anything like that, if they quit eating all of a sudden, or diarrhea. Diarrhea is a big one in kittens and puppies. Any diarrhea don't wait. Take them to the vet. Find out the source of the diarrhea so that it can be properly treated. Okay. 
That, oh. That's good advice. Yeah. Very oh, good advice. Yes. Diarrhea is a big one. <laughs> oh. and, and, if, and one thing that will help too is if you have an animal, a puppy or kitten that has diarrhea, bring a fresh sample in because you just can't get enough as a vet from a puppy or kitten, you know, mm -hmm. doing a probe or, or anything okay. like that. So if you could bring a big sample, we can centrifuge it and we can see exactly what's in there. If it's parasites, um, worms, protozoa, you know, if it's bacterial, as long as you have that big sample, you can you can fi figure out a lot. So Okay, that is something to remember oh. if you do have a problem. Yes. So, yes. well, this is good information, <laughs> Greg. Well, but it seems like that if you're careful and you do things things in a proper way that you're really not going to encounter a great deal of problem. It's when you neglect yes. and that you tend to have uh, exacerbate yes. whatever problems yes. they may have. Right. Well, I think it's now time to take a break. Yes. We have a special feature on our program. It's a, it's a story about an animal that has that is deceased or passed away. And we have a lovely story about Rennie's beloved dog name, Tucker. Yes. Let's give a listen. Let's give a listen. Tucker was a beautiful collie dog and was the first dog that I ever had. He came to me when he was 10 years old. He lived with me until he was 16 years old and died just a few weeks before I graduated from vet school. The six years that I had with him were absolutely wonderful for both of us. He was a gentle soul and a true gentleman. He never met a stranger and even though his vocal cords were cut as a puppy, he greeted everyone with a quiet bark. He especially liked it when people would talk to him. Tucker was truly my best friend and confidant. His picture in my office reminds me daily of the wonderful times we had together. Welcome back to the, uh, to the show. We hope you enjoyed that uh, special little story about Tucker. And in memory of Tucker, uh, Rennie has agreed to make a donation to one of the local animal organizations. We thank her very much for that. Excuse me there, Wicket. <laughs> if any of you, in the, as a viewer, would like to have one of your pets uh, be uh, featured on the Forget Me Not, you can give us a call at 270-443-8330. We always have a spot, op a spot open to remember a loved animal from the past. Well, we're pleased to have with us today for a couple of minutes uh, our friend Donna Groves, who's Hi, been Donna. here with us several, several times, who wants to talk a little bit about a special project over at Project, project Hope. Hope. Yeah, we've got our new kennels set for the dogs, and so now we'd like to do something special for the kitties. Okay. Oh. We don't like the kitties to be in the little cages. It, it's not a good environment no. for them. And so we're raising some money to try to build a, we have a big cage in the center that several cats can mm -hmm. go in and roam right. and be free. And get up high. And get up high, climb, say, and they have baskets along the edge. And we want to build a couple more of those. Uh -huh. So we're trying to raise some money for the cat enclosure project. Okay. In order to, uh, to let them have a, a little more freedom mm -hmm. while they're at the shelter waiting for their forever homes. Yes. Oh, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, I didn't realize until the last year how important uh, having a big cage for them. And, and Donna, where can we send donations to this special project at Project Hope? Well, you can just send it over to the uh, Project Hope address, Project Hope, P.O. Box 125, Metropolis, Illinois, 62960, and just put a little notation on there that it's for the uh, kitty fu for the kitty fund. The kitty room. Or the, the kitty the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if they have questions, how can they contact uh, the show? Uh, the shelter is number 618-524-8939. Okay. We also have the website, uh, projecthopeanimalshelter.com. Okay. And we invite our viewers to, to uh, participate with that we, particular we really, program. We really like to have the kitties having a little oh, more room to roam. Absolutely. Yeah. That would help them out. And Greg and I would like you to take oh. this as our donation well, to, the, to the, I call it the kitty room fund. <laughs> the kitty room so, fund. So the cats will have better uh, and larger enclosures Quarters. while they're until they get there forever and homes. anybody who can help with the with the la, uh, labor labor as far as, uh, construction putting, construction those <laughs> that would be great too uh, we really could use that help well so Donna, we, let, let we, us know. we want to thank you so much for joining us for a few That's moments right. today and best of luck with this project and thank uh, you uh, we just hope everything keeps going well uh, over at project right. hope so thank you thanks again for coming and sharing it with us thanks We'd like to move now to one of our regular uh, features on the program. Pam Wells, who is our resident poet, has written a special little poem for today called Little Bow. We think you'll enjoy it. 
Little Bo, the tiny black puppy peeked out through the maze of lonely lost pets just longing for days, of sunshine and car rides and pats on the head, of dog treats and laughter and their very own bed. Jumping and barking, his heart seemed to say, pick me, please pick me, I just want to play. I'll learn how to fetch and I'll try very hard to be a good dog and I'll stay in my yard. Then big weathered hands reached out through the door for the tiny black pup waiting still on the floor. And with the gentlest touch, the man stroked the pup's head, saying, hi, little fellow. My name is Big Ed. You're a real beauty and you look like a bow. See, he was my first dog a long time ago. Let's go for a ride. You can sit up real high and feel the warm sunshine and watch the trees go by. I'll take you with me, buddy, everywhere I go, said Big Ed to his new pup, and I'll call you Little Bo. As they drove off together down the road that sunny day, memories filled Ed's thoughts of his first Bo and his sweet and gentle way. Then the pup nudged his knee and let out a contented sigh. A wave of love embraced Ed as he looked into the sky. Thank you, Lord, for this little pup, and may he always grow in love and grace with many years like my bow of long ago. We're glad that you're back with us to have our visit with uh, Dr. Rennie Church. But uh, before we do that, we'd like to thank our resident poet, Pam Wells, for that excellent little poem. And if you'd like to be in contact with Pam, uh, to have her maybe come to your group or your school, remember that her stage name is Miss Bunny. And you can reach her both either at petlicks at yahoo.com or by telephone at 270 575-3822 and we'd like to thank Pam again for doing this wonderful job. Uh, Miss Bunny and Scooby Sue would just love to come see you people. So. And that's humane education here uh, in the Paducah area. Right. Okay. okay. Well, getting back now to Rennie, uh, what do we do about the problem of so many unwanted cats and dogs? You know, when do they come in heat and quote, how do we kind of keep the population under control? Generally, Help us out. <laughs> all right. Generally, uh, female dogs will come into heat anywhere from seven months to a year, depending okay. on their size. Okay. Um, so we generally recommend that you spay at six months of age. Okay. okay. Now, uh, cats are generally the same, but cats are interesting. They tend to um, be most active in long days. So when spring comes and at the height of summer is when they are most actively um, in heat. Okay. They are. Um, they ovulate in the presence of a male, so they're always oh, really? ready. Really. Always ready to have babies. So it's a significant problem, both for dogs and, and cats, cats, but especially cats, because cats just seem to have litter after litter I after know. litter. And uh, so, you, you know, we can spay a cat that's in heat because generally in, in spring and summer, they're going to be in heat when they come in. So, okay. Um, but uh, dogs, you generally like to um, not spay when they're in heat. Like if they're in cycle, let them finish that cycle, and in about six weeks, it's safe to spay. So. Okay. The neutering we generally do around eight months of age. Mm -hmm. well, the question with that, how many times a year can a dog come into heat and or a cat come into heat? Dogs come into heat every six months as a rule okay. of thumb. If they okay. read the book, it's every six months. Okay. Um, cats, like I said, <laughs> just in the presence of a male, they're they're ready. They're so ready. And okay. on long days, yeah, they're they're not as active as in fall and winter as the days shorten, but mm -hmm. in long days where there's lots of sunshine, okay. yeah, it's a problem. So the the the, con the concept that uh, this only happens once a year or. <laughs> Twice a year is, is not at all true. Twice for, a year in dogs, but not for cats. But yes. for cats. For cats, right. yeah. And we can't stress enough, it, it would be so much better not to have the problem of the unwanted uh, kittens and puppies that we can't find homes for mm -hmm. if we would just spay and re be responsible pet owners uh, and spay and neuter yes. our animals. That yes. would just be wonderful. Um, what suggestions might you have that, because I you know the cost of spaying and neutering can be uh, expensive, mm -hmm. and what can we do to, to help alleviate this problem, Rennie? Cost-wise, you mean? Yes, cost-wise. There, um, there are lots of programs out there through most of the shelters that offer a, a discount when you adopt a cat or a dog, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the veterinarians in this area participate in those programs, and it does help alleviate the cost of spay and neuter. Okay. Yes, yes, that is, is wonderful help that, that yes. we get. And yes. we're, we hope that maybe in the Paducah area that we can even build on this. 
Uh, Rennie, one thing since I've worked now with animal organizations that I didn't understand but understand now, there can be problems with people who say, well, oh, I'll take a litter of kittens. Let's educate the public of the problem of the free kittens and free puppies. You mean the ads in the paper? Well, the ads thing. are yeah. or the, the sign situation. that's put up somewhere. That's right. Sort of um, just if you have puppies or, and kittens that you want to find a home for, investigate the homes. Um, you know, make sure you know where they're going, and and just ask questions. You know, are they going to be indoor, outdoor? You know, do you have any other pets? You know, what is the purpose? Is it just going to be, you know, for the kids or, or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, we actually had a lady call the clinic one time, and she said, do you have any free kittens? And I said, well, we have two on the board. Um, you know, uh, is there any right. other information you'd like? And she said, well, I was hoping for more. And I, and I said, why do you need so many kittens? And she said, well, I have a really big snake to feed. And I asked her, please, not to call again. You know, that's that's inappropriate, uh -huh. in my opinion, you know, yes. for, for kittens. And uh, she didn't ask for puppies, but for kittens. So just be careful. You know, you just, yeah. it's a dangerous world out there. So even for our pets. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, yes, it's, it's irresponsible, but kittens and puppies can be used as um, uh, to bait fighting dogs, mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of purposes that they should not be. So right. you're absolutely right. You have to be very cautious about... Uh, where you give kittens to. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you just ask questions, questions. about that. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that's an important thing that we would want our uh, viewers uh, to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, uh, go ahead, Greg. Just uh, um, from a medical standpoint, uh -huh. um, why is it good to spay and neuter? Um, well, let's talk about neuter first. Okay. Um, male dogs will seek out the smell of a female dog for miles. And so mm -hmm. if you neuter a dog when they're young, say around eight months to a year, then um, generally you, you take care of two things. One, the wanderlust, you know, just to go and explore. Right. You kind of calm them down and take that out of them. Um, it, bad habits, you know, you'll do before they develop bad habits of lifting the leg in the house <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's very important. Um, as far as uh, spaying, some of the benefits of spaying, um, down the road, heat cycles become um, not real regular, and you can have an improperly evacuated uterus, and you can get into some serious life-threatening infections in mm -hmm. the uterus, and then you end up spaying you know, a 12-year-old dog, which is not uh, as easy yeah. or mm -hmm. as safe as spaying a young, healthy animal. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big things. That, you know, People always worry, is my, is my animal going to get fat once they're spayed and neutered? Metabolism changes within 48 hours of a spay, so you want to, if they're on a kitten food or, or a puppy food, you'll want to change them to an adult food. And just remember, you know, moderation on your food and lots of exercise, just like with us, mm -hmm. diet and exercise is key. Yeah. Key. So, mm -hmm. Boy, this time has gone Doesn't fast. Doesn't it go today. fast, Greg, <laughs> oh, when <golly>. you're... <laughs> uh, in the final minute, what, what would you like to leave with our viewers today, Rennie? Um, the most important thoughts. Spay and neuter. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's Good. that's the big thing. Spay yes. and neuter. Um, and just uh, once a year, at least, you need to do those health checks and, and mm -hmm. get your vaccine. And, and just um, talk to your vet about the appropriate um, regimen for your dog. You know, what your dog needs, what your cat needs in particular. So okay. but spay and neuter. That's the big thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the best care we can give <laughs> to our young puppies and kittens. Yes. Rennie, we would like to thank you so much thank for being you. our guest today and bringing your friend Birdie, Birdie. with you. <laughs> She's had a good time, <laughs> too, her, I think. And, uh, and hopefully uh, uh, things will work out for our viewers with newborn kittens, kittens and puppies. And puppies. And, uh, but right now, I guess we have to close off, Darlene. Yeah. So I'm Greg. I'm Darlene. And we want our viewers to remember our famous slogan, give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Bye.